But thanks for joining in. What we wanted to do today is have a masterclass on immunity. Okay, and I have my head doctor, Dr. Akshat, who leads our medical vertical. He's a trained MBBS doctor specializing in lifestyle medicine. I also have Hardika on board. She's the head of clinical dietics with us. She leads all clinical nutrition for us. And she's worked extensively across hospitals with patients. And now she manages clients around the world when it comes to immunity, cancer, kidney, and all the diseases that you can think of. We also have Hemali, and Hemali has been a professor for a while. She's also, uh, <clears throat> she's also an expert when it comes to nutrition and clinical dietics. She's been managing patients for us around the world, and she's also a professor and lecturer on the subject of nutrition and clinical dietics. We also have Tarika, who is a lifestyle management expert with us. She is also a trained yoga teacher, naturopathy, and a student of uh, microbiology. So we have this entire panel put together today. They are practitioners. As we speak, they handle multiple patients. And we figured this is the best time to start talking about the immune system because you know the amount of fear and panic we have right now, the new buzzword, as everyone knows, is the immune system. Well, we want you to understand, we don't want to make this session too technical. And I am going to direct questions to each person on the panel that we have so that they can educate you. They can edu educate each of you in their expertise, but coming down to the basics of immunity. So we started this line of integrative medicine about maybe eight years ago, and our base has always been the immune system. Unfortunately, it's taken a virus, a crisis of a virus to make the world wake up to understanding that the immune system is the most important and most intelligent part of the human body. And we have misused the immune system. We have abused the immune system. And that's why today, when you look at dynamics of the coronavirus, who is it impacting? Okay, it's not impacting everyone. It's impacting people with low immune systems. It's impacting people with lung issues, you know, underlying conditions, the elderly people. You know, so we don't really have to fear too much. We need to stay safe. We need to social distance. We need to stay locked down and observe and follow the guidelines that our government is putting down for us. Over and above that, there is so much that every one of you can do at home. Simple things to boost your immune system. So when we start talking about the immune system, people immediately start Googling what are the best foods for immunity? What are the best exercises for immunity? But unfortunately, the immune system doesn't work that way. You and I both know several people who waste a lot of money on supplements and vitamin C's and nutraceuticals and all of that stuff because it's sold as an immune booster. But yet they're constantly sick. They constantly get fevers, colds, viruses. They fall sick with the change in weather and all of that stuff because food alone doesn't work to boost your immune system. You see, when it comes to food, food has to be first digested, absorbed, assimilated and transported to trillions of cells in your body that uses that food and those micronutrients to boost your immune system. Secondly, exercise. Today we have so many people who are punishing their bodies with exercise to lose weight. They're going on fat diets that starve them of micronutrients and they're punishing their bodies with exercise. Today you will understand how over-exercising with lack of recovery, rest and micronutrients actually lowers your immune system. So most people are told by their trainers, pop a vitamin E and pop a vitamin C after an intensive training class. Why? Because they know that your immune systems are compromised. When you train heavy, your immune system is compromised. Now, in the long run, training is good for you. In the long run, it boosts your immunity. But if you are overtraining without sleeping well at night, without recovering, without having sufficient protein or vitamins to recover, broken down muscles, your immune system gets lower and lower. That's why a lot of people start an exercise program, they fall sick, they lose several days, and then they just lose the motivation to stop working out. We're going to talk about the third pillar, which is by far the most important pillar. You could be eating the best food, you can be doing the best exercise, but if you are sleep deprived, your immune system is literally half of what it should be. And today what we talk about is all backed by medical research, science, and it's always existed. It's nothing new, but our complicated lifestyle and our complicated life way of living, you know, has moved us into only looking for complication for human health. Today, we're going to show you how human health and immunity is one of the most simplest things that you can do and why you should do it now. Because once you get sick, okay, yes, your immune system will come to your rescue, but sometimes people 
extend that set point. They've abused their body so much that the immune system takes a lot of time to recover. Okay, you may have a strong immune system, that's good, but an efficient immune system is more important. Okay, like I always say, you may have a lot of money in the bank, but if you don't know how to wisely use that money, that money can actually destroy you or you could lose all of that money. So we may have a strong immune system, but we want an efficient immune system, which means if I breed in a virus or a bacteria today, I want my immune system to come, adapt, identify, kill, and get me back to normal, okay? So we're gonna talk about sleep, and the fourth vertical is your emotional hygiene. Today, almost every second doctor is screaming the importance of reducing stress levels. Why? Because they know that if you're stressed, you fall sick. How do you fall sick if you're stressed? Your immune system weakens. That's how you produce cortisol levels. Your cortisol levels produces inflammation, cytokines, which are needed in the body, but not in excess. When we have it in excess, it starts attacking our own tissues. It starts replicating antibodies that attacks our own body. And then we start falling sick. And that's how stress makes us sick. So to break it down, we can make this session very complicated. We can go into detail about white blood cells, lymphocytes, strike cells, T helper cells, neutrophils, macrophages, all of that stuff. But we don't need to do that. All you need to do is whenever you do a CBC, most of you would have done a complete blood count. That's a CBC test. Your doctor will give it to you. Now, today evening after the session, have a look at it. And you'll see lymphocytes, neutrophils, white blood cells, macrophages, all of these things. All of those are components of your immune system. So when we look at it, when your doctor looks at it, it gives us an immediate indicator of how your immune system is functioning. So sometimes your levels are way too high, signifying to us that there is an infection in your body, that your immune system is elevated to fight that. Sometimes it may be too low, which tells us about the strength of your immune system, or you may be going through treatments like chemo, radiation, heavy drugs that suppresses your immune system, which means parallelly with your treatment, you need to make lifestyle and dietary changes to improve your immune system. Okay, so we've put an integrated panel together because number one, we are not against medicine and neither should you be. Okay, medicine has its place in our lives. Today, if we get a viral attack or a bacterial attack, okay, yes, my first step is, if it is not serious, can I use home remedies and lifestyle changes to manage it? But if I'm unable to do that, guess what? I will take an antibiotic. I will go and visit my doctor and take an antiviral if I have to, because if I don't, that same virus and bacteria can cause irreversible harm to me. Let me give you a quick example. Today, people look at heart disease as disease of the heart. People look at diabetes as an insulin problem, as a sugar problem. Let me also tell you that 90% of the, these diseases are caused by viral attacks. Yes, viral attacks. Let's say, for example, I have a virus in me. That virus can attack the endothelial cells in my arteries, creating small bruises. Now, my body's natural defense mechanism will go and seal that with clock. Okay, so your cardiologist will look and say, hey, you have a blockage, you have clock, let's break it down, let's do a bypass and all of that stuff. But the damage was caused by a viral attack. The same thing, something as simple as a parasite in my small intestine. A lot of tests will not help me determine this, but a, parasitic, uh, a parasite attack will give me common symptoms like fatigue, brain fog, bloating, acidity, diarrhea, smelly stools, loss of weight, probably gain of weight, all of these issues, deteriorating skin and hair. And now we will look at what we have and say, okay, I'm not eating enough. I need more vitamins. I need more minerals. We will look at the symptoms and treat the symptom. But if I go into the root cause and I now send you for a stool test and I find out in your stool test that you have a parasite inside of you, that parasite could be the one issue that is causing all of your symptoms. We kill the parasite and all of your symptoms disappear. The same thing with acidity. A lot of people think they have a lot of acid in their system, but a lot of people with acidity symptoms actually have very little acid. And this leads to a bacteria called an H. pylori bacteria. And when you live with this bacteria, it wrecks havoc with your health and your life. All your, your common symptoms could be ended by just treating the H. pylori bacteria. For that, you would take an antibiotic course, you will be cleaned up, you clean up your diet and your lifestyle, you make sure you don't have the H. pylori bacteria and all of your symptoms disappear. So you need to understand that a lot of conditions that people have today, okay, are caused by viruses, germs, bacteria, pathogens, and all of these problems. So when you have a very symptomatic approach to your symptoms, that is when 
we add danger to our life. Take the medicine for your symptom, but you must get to the root cause of why you have it in the first place. At the end of the day, let's give you a simple example. You're running a business and your business is making losses, okay? You start cutting costs, you start infusing in more money, you start cutting, on, cutting down your headcount. How long will you do this? Or you look at the root cause of why am I losing money? You find out that someone in your team is not contributing. You find out that your strategy is wrong. That is a root cause analysis. So you address the root cause and you stop the leakage of money. The same thing with the human body. And people need to understand today, if you want my view on what's happening right now, Europeans and Americans have, and I'm not generalizing this, okay? When they fall sick, they immediately take or self-medicate themselves with a normal over-the-counter drug. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this. Their doctors allow it, the FDA allows it. But remember, every time you treat an immediate symptom, okay, with an allopathic drug, you are compromising your immune system. Okay, come back to not just India, but even the Far East countries where people will try to treat a normal cough and cold with a little steam inhalation, ginger water, turmeric, and it goes away and you're fine. You allowed your immune system to get stronger and stronger. Like I said, if you have persisting symptoms, you must see your doctor. But when we over and self-medicate, that is the easiest way to destroy your immune system. You make it weaker and weaker. Let's say, for example, your child. You have a child right now. And if you spoon feed your child, okay, they grow weak. They grow up to be very weak in the real world. They're pampered while they're under you. But you put them out in the real world, they collapse. They emotionally collapse because we've not made them strong enough to survive in the world outside. Take that same analogy and put it with your body right now. Your immune system, falling sick is good for you. Every time you fall sick and recover naturally, your immune system has gotten stronger and stronger. So we need to understand that today, most people have weak immune systems because we have compromised it. Now, how do we go ahead and build this? How do we build the immune system? We have two immune systems in our system. One is our innate immune system where I, get a, I, I, get, I fall down, I get a cut, I breathe in the germ. My immune system will automatically you know, get up and protect me and the job is done. If I get a viral or a bacteria, and you notice it with a flu or a cold, it takes you three to four to five days to get better. Why? Because your secondary immune system or your adaptive immune system will take time to identify the virus or the bacteria, assemble the army the right kind of antibodies and then attack it. So that takes three to four days. It doesn't mean you're weak. Your adaptive immune system is taking time to assemble the right army to help you get better. Now I come in between that system and I pop painkillers and antacids or whatever it is. I've just made my immune system weaker because guess what? If my immune system is able to produce an antibody for virus one, the next time virus one attacks me, I already have the antibody in my immune system already in my genes and the genetic blueprint of that antibody is ready. A virus one enters me again, my body's used to handling it. That's exactly how vaccinations work. Vaccinations takes a part of the dead virus and re-puts it into your body so your own immune system develops antibodies, okay? And then the next time you have that, your own immune system will fight it. So over to Dr. Akshat now. Dr. Akshat is our medical head. Dr. Akshat, in your medical practice, what is the importance of immune system? And what do you do as a doctor to advise people to get the immune system strong? If you can explain to people from the medical aspect on your take on immunity and what you do as a medical head to improve the immunity of people, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Luke. Uh, I think it, it's, it's, it's all the same, whether it's medical or not medical. Immunity is one of the most essential and most intelligent system, the, the way you rightly mentioned. There is, it is a, a, if you have innate immunity and you have the acquired immunity. So innate is the first line of defense. It is something which you are born with and that's what you want to keep developing. And yes, second is the acquired immunity, which is more targeted, more specific to viruses, pathogens. And you know, once you come in contact, that's when the body actually produces antibody. So in such a scenario, when you're looking at, you know, the COVID situation, when you're looking at an epidemic, it depends on three factors. The three factors being first is the agent. When you say agent, which is the virus, currently it's new. So that body, it's no, it, we don't have that information. We, that's not information to us. It's very, very new. Okay. Second is the environment. When we talk about the environment, what is happening around us? How is it going to protect us? How is it going to weaken us? Is it going to help us, not help us? Because even our system, we have an internal environment and an external environment. 
currently we're actually it's a it's a speculation but they're saying that the covid is actually spreading more in the colder region so we are actually praying for summer heat okay and the third is we 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 are the host so when we talk about a host ourselves immunity and right now is the innate immunity which is going to play the most important role because that's our first line and that depends directly on your lifestyle okay so when you talk about lifestyle it's what you do every day what is lifestyle it's what you do every day you know your behavior your habits you know that is something which forms your routine so when you create a healthy routine or a relatively healthy routine which goes into a healthy lifestyle that means you know that you're building your immunity so what do you mean by immunity you know you're like okay fine you know i i fall ill sometimes i i fall sick many times or, or there are some some people who come now you know i've not, not had a single flu or a fever for the last 3 years okay so like you correctly said like luke correctly said you know it is falling sick is important but how quickly you recover and how many times you fall sick in a year that is what is important can you do with home remedies can you do with otcs or do you really need to go for antibiotic steroids and how many times that is something which will define immunity but honestly immunity doesn't stop only for acute inflammation you when you talk about chronic diseases you talk about diabetes blood pressure heart disease uh, thyroid all these things are a form now it has been proven that it is chronic inflammation and oxidative stress and both chronic inflammation and oxidative stress actually weakens the immunity a lot so it has been proven now the only way to fight this the only way to increase your immunity is to actually lead a very very good lifestyle which we will kind of you know hopefully discuss more also but from a medical aspect one thing that i want to kind of you know just try to touch upon right anybody with chronic disorders considering you know even if, even if you're older than 60 not over the 60 take your medications on time okay don't don't try to skip medications at this point don't try to over medicate don't try to over supplement nothing of that at this point okay this point at least for the next couple of weeks we need to be extremely careful that we take our medications because if you have a chronic disorder taking medication is part of your lifestyle okay the problem becomes when we take uh, 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 medicines you know we just keep med taking medicines and do nothing for our lifestyle so that is where the problem becomes so we have to be careful that we take medication in the right quantity even when you are doing healthy stuff we do it in the right quantity moderation and balance is the answer if we overdo anything it's not going to help our immunity so that's extremely important so dr akshat as a medical as a medical professional what are the two or three biggest mistakes that you see patients make i i love your point on chronic illness like i always tell people with diabetes hypertension your reports may look good your levels are looking good but you still have a problem the medication right. is suppressing it you still got to change your lifestyle you still right. got to get the problem out of your system and it's called chronic because you learn to live with it but it's right. still not okay what are some of the mistakes that you see people make which improve, you know which causes a problem with their immunity you know what are some of these lifestyle issues that you see so the biggest issue is that people don't follow a good lifestyle they they either they're not eating well or they're not exercising well or you know they're just not not moving it's sedentary they're not sleeping i think sleeping is something which is ignored a lot you know the way you keep saying and i think one of the biggest factors which controls the entire environment around us is our mind you know the stress yeah. levels because that is something which is ignored we just don't pay attention because we are running through life okay so for example if you're talking about diabetes the numbers are okay because you're taking five medications and then suddenly you get up and say that i want to stop medication and then suddenly you just stop all of the medications but you have to understand that if you want to stop something you have to give it something to support it so unless and until you have a good lifestyle supporting your diabetes or your condition or your body or immunity you can't let go of the medication basically so you make the right changes give your body some time to settle in and then you start going off medication so for me very very important is that don't stop you know start and stop medication just suddenly that's very important when you're living for in a chronic disease basically second is the mind when you talk about the mind stress levels is something now honestly in today's world it's not we are not we are, when we are talking about you know hcqs we are just popping medicine you know azithromycin and all that's not really the right way to go about it just because of whatsapp post or five whatsapp post said that it doesn't mean that you pop it so you have to be extremely understanding and careful about what goes into your mouth okay so honestly all that the hcq or the, the tablets are doing right now they're curing just a, a stress they are just curing a panic they are doing nothing for your body okay in fact what you have done is by stocking up on medication you've actually taken it taken it away for someone who actually needed it so it is because it's not in stock it's not easy to get all, all these medications at this point so my suggestion is like 
no indiscriminate uses of medicines at all please so that is something which is very important concentrate on why you're panicking you know try to understand the situation that is something which is going to help you and rationalize with yourself and your levels will panic levels will go down and you feel better your immunity goes up so doctor i wanted to ask you you know i mean we have several ways of determining if someone has low immunity like i said if someone comes and says hey look i felt sick four times this year i don't put them right. in a low immunity category until i find out no. how they how long they took to recover and how many drugs they needed to take to recover exactly what are exactly. some of the signs that people can recognize that they have low immunity so that that yep. can be an indicator for them to start investing in their lifestyle and their health right. what are some right. of these indicators i think first is we should not depend on only on blood reports just because the esr came a little high you know we should we shouldn't really panic with numbers we should actually look at symptoms when you talk about symptoms suppose someone is falling in very often every month you know gut issues i think gut issues is one thing which is extremely important constant acidity reflux you get up in the morning with you know an irritated throat constipation in incomplete evacuation you know you're going to the you're going to the, the washroom multiple times just to kind of evacuate there's there's bloating this distension happening fatigue i think low energy levels is one of the biggest issues when you're talking about uh, low immunity you know so these are the things that we want to look at it basically how you're going through your entire day how active you feel then how many times you're falling it and i have patients coming to me they fall literally every month or maybe twice a month they do a course of antibiotics there's something wrong okay that their reports are absolutely okay even you know the crp will be fine esr will be fine obviously they're fine because you're on antibiotics constant, constantly so what you want to look at is how often you fall ill why are you falling in that often okay what about allergy you know do you get up with a cold in the morning seasonal variations and all these are also things that we want to look at so we have to kind of you know break it up person to person but these are you know the crux of it any swellings aches and pains in the body and the, you know what you like to mention how quickly you recover from an exercise that is also very important Thank you, doctor. That's brilliant. And so, just to recap, you know, a lot of people will be thinking, but you know, we have quick fixes available. But my question is, at a time of a crisis like today, where is your quick fix? There is no quick There's fix. None. We can There's only none. rely on the human body. People keep asking right. me, Luke, are you worried? Are you worried? I'm not worried at all. If I get right. the virus, I know my immune system is going to heal it. That's how confident I am. But when right. we constantly depend on quick fixes, we compromise it. Like, let's be honest. I use a quick fix. If uh, I remember Dr. Akshat, the night I was supposed to leave uh, for New York exactly. for a 24-hour trip, I had a really bad cold, and I said, "Listen, I need something because I can't cancel the trip." I took a quick right. fix, but I got back, worked on my immune system. So use it when we have to. But the point right. is, identify areas that you have low immunity, like Dr. Akshat said, because if you have Absolutely. it, you want to fix it right now. You want to slowly start fixing it because there is no scientist in the world. no doctor no nutritionist no healer that has yet understood the intelligence of the immune the system body. we need to give the body what it needs and let the intelligence kick in and that's how we see miracles happening everyone can google a miracle of a fourth stage cancer patient a brain tumor patient and no one has answers but what does that leave us with there was an intelligence in the human body that kicked in whatever it was and that's the intelligence we're trying to harness by doing the right lifestyle changes and doing it the right way so dr akshat stay on i want to move on right now to hardika who is the head of clinical dietics lots of experience in hospitals so hardika i have a couple of questions for you okay everyone yes. talks about everyone talks about ways to boost immunity can you point out some things that people do on a daily basis that actually dampens and stresses out the immune system that's a really good question look and need of an hour so basically uh, if i have to relate it to the current pandemic right so because of this uh, current situation uh, what most of us have done is stocked up stocked up on a lot of things right the first and foremost would be the refined sugar or the packaged products which is loaded with refined sugar and at the same time loaded with refined flour so this is first and foremost thing which would dampen your immunity sugar first of all makes your system acidic it's been reported that around 12 to 13 teaspoons of sugar a day which a common indian must be using one who is not really really uh, you know uh, considerate about his lifestyle and he's way way uh, 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 you know worried about his lifestyle what happens is it it weakens the lymphocyte you spoke about lymphocyte right so when you have so much amount of sugar it actually weakens the lymphocyte it suppresses the immune system 
by next couple of hours after after its consumption right after 10 minutes of consumption of sugar so it also inhibits the process of phagocytosis when i say phagocytosis it's the process wherein the wbc would kill the bacteria or the viruses right uh, even the cancer cells thrive on them so it it's like uh, a good time wherein you know you would really want to be careful that you you're not loading up on these things the second yeah, so i think that is a very good point let me pause you there when you brought up the cancer yeah. thing there's a reason why we have been fighting lobbies and you know people saying that sugar is okay when you have cancer let's understand the reason why we wouldn't want to take away sugar from anyone especially someone who's sick and someone who wants that little treat after a chemo session but we have to understand okay. that it is dampening and weakening your immune system so you're allowing the treatment to in its honest attempt to kill the cancer cells also kill the strong immune cells which should be there to protect you and to prevent the spread of your cancer so i'm so happy that you bring Absolutely. up the point of sugar talk about aerated drinks with junk food because all of this has hidden sugars in it go ahead please. correct so uh, when we talk about aerated drinks specifically right not only aerated drinks but there there's wide range of other concentrated uh, drinks which are available in market these days right so when we talk about aerated drinks first and foremost it would reduce your blood ph it it makes it all the more acidic and as we all know it's in the acidic medium that most of the diseases start right even the organisms they thrive on the acidic environment secondly it also contains phosphoric acid the acid which would affect your gut lining basically thereby it allows the other germs to enter as well thereby weakening your immune system so you would say okay when we are talking about sugar uh, it's loaded with sugar right all these concentrated drinks it may contain anywhere around 30 to 50 grams of sugar per can or maybe a 200 ml bottle that we are talking about you don't believe me please go ahead check the nutritional label uh, here on you know whenever you pick up any of the bottles so this is the amount of sugar that you're consuming within that quick 10 minutes of time right um secondly what i would want to add on is according to the uh, associated content there's there's one study which was been done um, it also says sugar can lower your immunity just 10 minutes after you drink it right which i also mentioned initially and all these drinks are super super loaded with sugar so you would want to be extra careful now we will say when we are talking about sugar what about diet diet sodas right diet aerated drinks which are available in market but then it contains aspartame which is not only affecting your gut lining it also causes neurological damage so you know that is the worst thing that you can opt for instead of aerated drinks so better be away from it uh so if you ask Ardhika, me what about smoking what about smoking and you know not just smokers but passive smoking so if someone smoking next to me i mean you could right. be eating organic food at home you could be doing pilates and yoga sleeping 7 hours right. but if you're smoking or you're involved in passive smoke all of that is True. literally rendered useless how does It, smoking impact the immune system in the quickest way possible okay uh again excellent question and i'm really happy to address this because uh, i i would just like to start with this that uh, there's a family friend of mine who owns a general store so as per what he told me he's like uh, hadika can you believe that the amount of cigarette which has been sold has increased considerably because of this pandemic because people are staying at home right so with stress there's a big chunk of population that would resort for alcohol and smoking specifically so when you speak about smoking cigarette smoke definitely causes a lot of inflammation first and foremost it 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 would destroy the natural anti inflammatory cells within our body okay it weakens the de defense in uh, it, it it weakens the defense immune system as such and what it also does is uh, it it is also causing um, changes or it alters the antigen in our body which is the main cause of immunity right and over a period of time excessive cigarette smoking is also related to autoimmune conditions so this is something which we would want to be careful about so when you are talking about the person who is actually smoking or about the person who is doing passive smoking irrespective of how healthy he must be eating or how healthy his lifestyle is right so even the person who is indirectly smoking which is passive smoking all these 
chain reactions occurs in that person as well. So, uh, you know, specifically for the person who's smoking at home at this point of time, you would want to be really careful because when you are smoking, all the people who are around you, uh, be it your children, be it your parents, be it your um, spouse, anyone, they all are equally affected like you. So you would really want to be careful about it. So I want to add a point here, Hardika. So a lot of smokers say, I'm going to pop zinc and vitamin C and I'm going to be fine. But please okay. understand it doesn't work like that because every time you smoke, just imagine what's happening. If you close your eyes for a minute and imagine you're inhaling a lot of toxic smoke, the first thing, the first thing that happens is inflammation is created in the body. Okay, because it's not natural for smoke to get into the lungs. So the body moves into the sympathetic nervous system, which is stress, which means your adrenaline, your cortisol, everything, all your inflammatory markers keep rising. So until that smoking, you know, that whole thing is done, your body is on high alert. So it doesn't matter how much of vitamin C you're taking or vitamin Z uh, or zinc. I tell smokers that, listen, either you start cutting it down or you go cold turkey and you stop it completely. But don't fool yourself by thinking I'm eating organic, I'm working out. So that's going to kind of, you know, balance the effects of smoking. It cannot work that way. Okay, there is no shortcut to reducing the impact or the effects of smoking. So, so Hardika, I wanted to yeah. add one more point. In your practice, you see patients on a daily basis. What are the top two or three lifestyle tips that you would give people to boost immunity? Because you constantly see sick people. So what are the right. top three things that come to your mind? And give us top, the top three foods that you mm -hmm. would advise for someone to boost immunity. Okay, so top three things that comes to my mind when I talk about immunity first would be deep rooted emotions. Like in my practice, whenever we consult anyone, we have seen there are, uh, there are these stressors or deep rooted emotions, which is one of the major cause of all the issues that starts, right? And when we talk about it, we all, we all know that, you know, your mind and your gut is interrelated. Also your gut and immunity is interrelated. So it, it's a vicious cycle. So that's the first and foremost thing. Second, as you always talk about is sleep. Sleep deprivation definitely is, is one of the major causes of uh, most of inflammation. It's the major cause of why recovery doesn't take place. It, it's, it's been also observed that, you know, uh, if you are deprived of sleep for one night, your N killer cells, which are the natural killer cells, it, it reduces its activity by 30%, which is, which is not a great, great idea uh, in, in order to ensure that your immune system is good enough. So that is the second point. Third, in general lifestyle, or I would also talk about water specifically out here. Uh, most of us, you know, water is something which, which has been really neglected by most of the people. But we have to understand one thing that 70% of our body is made up of water, right? It's not only that, but also the process of detoxification through sweat, urine, feces, everything requires water. Your cell to function properly, it needs to be well hydrated. A dehydrated cell, uh, even if you are dehydrated by 1%, your cell is not going to work or function to its optimum level. So that is something which you would want to take care of. So these are the top three things. When you talk about top three foods specifically, uh, the first and foremost, I would say, stick to your roots, right? Um, first would be, uh, if, if you talk about superfoods, first would be the tomato, onion, and garlic paste, which... Is, is very, very common to uh, Indian cooking as well. Um, tomatoes has lycopene, which, which is an excellent antioxidant. Um, when we talk about onion, it, it's a great source of sulfur as well. And it is also known or proven to uh, work best in terms of uh, many kinds of fever and, and digestive disorders and all. And third, when I talk about garlic, garlic is excellent for your intestine as well as, as, well as H. pylori infections and many other conditions as well. So that is something uh, which, which comes to my mind first. I would ensure that I, I put in tomato, onion, garlic paste in, into uh, that person's diet. Second would be cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are not only rich in sulfur, but secondly, I would also say that it is loaded with vitamins and minerals. So uh, as you rightly mentioned initially, you know, that all these diseases start when there's some uh, issues with regards to you're not meeting your daily requirement of vitamins and minerals. So this is something which we can definitely look at, including cruciferous vegetables. Uh, for example, it could be broccoli, it could be cabbage, it could be cauliflower. But um, 
a, a caution out here for all the hypothyroid patients. You would want to be a little careful with regards to, you know, consuming it raw and having it in moderation is something that you would want to look at. Um, third would be probiotics. So specifically include rice kanji, beetroot kanji, or it could be a, a bowl of yogurt on a daily basis. So that is something which is excellent for your immunity because it's a live culture of good bacteria, which will take care of all the bad bacteria and viruses, which is growing within the intestinal lining. So thereby it helps you improve your gut health and gut immunity. Thank you, Hardika. Thanks a lot. And Hardika has worked on some of the most difficult cases that we've ever come across, cases where patients were just sent home because there was nothing else that the medical world could do. And, you know, slowly, step by step, rebuilding their gut, which is why she talks about probiotics. Because right now I can tell you, if you have a weak gut, you have a weak immune system. Doesn't matter how much you're exercising, what superfoods you're putting into your system, your gut is everything when it comes to your immune system, which is why acidity, bloating, all of these things, it is not okay to live with these problems. It is not okay to have it. They have to be fixed. So everyone who's watching this right now, just to let you all know that we will be sending you a detailed handbook with foods and things that you can do and a lot more stuff. So if I've spoken about gut, obviously, I'm not going to make this about gut, but we will be sending you enough of information and videos to learn how to look after your gut. So thank you so much, Hardika. I'm going to move That's on to Tarika you. now, who looks at lifestyle yoga and naturopathy. Tarika had also planned a demonstration of certain pranayamas and yoga asanas, but we're not going to do that right now. She's going to be kind enough to shoot that separately, and we will send you that video so you can practice it on your own. So over to you, Tarika. So Tarika, when it comes to yoga, you've been dealing with a lot of patients. You've been teaching them pranayama, meditation. I think by now, Hardika and Dr. Akshat have already mentioned the importance of stress and managing it when it comes to the immune system. So it's very easy to tell people not to be stressed. Everyone in this world has problems. They could be financial problems. They could be relationship problems health problems, work problems, whatever it is. Everyone has a problem. Okay, what is your take on stress and the immune system? And as a therapist, when it comes to lifestyle, what is the importance of meditation? Can you tell us two or three pranayamas, which you can demonstrate later, not right now, and two or four of the most powerful asanas that people can do right now at home in order to boost their immune system? Over to you, Tarika. Um, thank you, Luke. Uh, so to begin with, I think enough has been spoken about uh, stress and immunity, but I really want to say that uh, our body has been designed to cope up with stress, but it's not been designed to cope up with chronic stress. And today we're living in a world where we are constantly exposed to negative news, social media, throwing away information, fresh news of, you know, death numbers for the next, I mean, uh, that have happened in the last 24 hours and all of that. Uh, so um, uh, I think you've always mentioned that uh, uh, there is a difference between having stressed and being stressed. So while there is stress in the world right now, I think, I, I, I think we can take ownership of being stressed or not being stressed. That decision is on us. And today, uh, since we all have the, uh, are at home, I think, uh, and, and the world outside doesn't seem like a safe space. So what can we do to make or to create this home as a safe space is what we should look at. Uh, so today we'll be uh, staying with families. And uh, I think we, we all have realized by now that you feel the safest when you're with your family. You've realized the power of family at this point of time. Um, so uh, I think my first and foremost tips would be, uh, you know, what can you do to unsubscribe and cut away from social media, especially media channels that send uh, stirring news or that stirs you up or instills fear in you. Uh, you know, engage your family members in little things. I think um, since we all have sent our maids on leaves, I think how can we all team up as a family together and distribute tasks amongst each other? How can men also take ownership and, you know, do household works? Uh, because uh, when you distribute the load from a woman to, I mean, equally amongst the family, I think there's a change in the stress environment also. Uh, engage your kids, play with the kids. Uh, I think there was a beautiful exercise that I came across as, uh, you know, uh, with your kids that you can do is uh, it's called as loving memory uh, treasure hunt. Uh, so, uh, you know, ask your kids that uh, take a hunt around the house and pick five things that reminds you of a loving memory of your mom or your 
father, you know, so, so that's a collective activity that you can do. I think uh, also the importance of positive psychology is very important because everything seems negative right now, but how can we trick our brain to think positive, which is why positive affirmations come into picture. Uh, I think there's one affirmation that I would like to say and share with our viewers right now, and that is in every day and in every way, my mind and body are healing. I repeat, in every day and in every way, my mind and body are healing. So I think I would really encourage people to practice this again and again, because it's after all tricking your subconscious mind to think that there's something positive. And the more you repeat it, the more embedded it gets into your subconscious mind. Coming over to meditation, um, I think we all are connected to the outside environment through our five senses. And meditation teaches you how to turn all of those five senses, senses inwards, reflect within you. When you can't go outside, go inside. Uh, so I think which is why meditation, uh, and I think each of us must have noticed by now that meditation has been used, used in a huge way. There are global meditations happening. There are global prayers happening. I think people are really getting inclined to spirituality. Um, and I think meditation doesn't have to be rolling out, rolling out a mat. I think something as simple as using your breath could be a surefire way to meditate because the first thing that goes out of track is your breath when you're stressed. So focusing on your breath, focusing on your inhale, focusing on your exhale, I think that's one of the most powerful tools when it comes to uh, stress management. So the moment you find yourself, you know, uh, uh, getting sucked into a negative emotion or getting sucked into stress, I think consciously remind yourself and get your focus back to breathing. Uh, however, uh, not all of us breathe the right way, uh, which is why I think uh, I would in fact want to demonstrate the right way of breathing. I'll probably do it later. Uh, but the, the right way to breathe is to breathe through your belly. You know, most of us, when I, when I teach our clients how to, how to uh, I mean, when I ask them how to deep breathe, they breathe like this. You know, that's not the right way to breathe. Uh, the right way to breathe is to either do diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing, abdominal breathing. So you, sh so I'll demonstrate that uh, for a better picture. But if you, if uh, if you actually visualize a, a newborn baby, I think a newborn baby shows a classic example of how to breathe the right way. And one deep breath, your cortisol levels fall down. Two deep breaths, your cortisol levels further fall down. So I think that's about breath, uh, the prana. And I think oxygen has every connection to immunity. And there have been endless researchers that have been able to prove that. Um, then coming over to yoga, yoga is not only about poses, uh, but it's about aligning your mind, body, and souls, which is why it is called as yoga, you know, aligning your mind, body, and soul. That's how holistic health also com comes into picture. Um, so I think that uh, the whole focus over here, while there are so many yoga asanas, uh, there's one commonality in every yoga asana, and that is when it comes to immunity boosting asanas, all are heart openers or all are chest openers. Because when you expand your chest, not only are you giving more space for your lungs to expand, for more oxygen to flow in, but also you're gently massaging your heart. And when you massage your heart, you're stimulating the circulation of blood. And what does blood carry? It carries nutrients, oxygen, and immune cells. So, um, so uh, I think when I start recording my next video, uh, I'll be demonstrating three most powerful yoga asanas, uh, which is a bridge pose or a setu bandhasana, ushtrasana or a camel pose, uh, cobra pose or a uh, bhujangasana. I think these three yoga asanas are the most powerful. They're most powerful uh, chest openers. And also it gently massages a gland called as thymus gland. Thymus gland is situa situated in between your lungs, just above your heart. And that is one of the master glands when it comes to immunity because it stimulates, it, it stimulates the release of something called as lymphocytes. Okay. Great, Tarek. Uh, thanks a lot for that. So, you know, I want to get into stress a little bit deeper to relate Tarek's points to what we said. So everyone has two nervous systems. You have a central nervous system that's broken down into your sympathetic how everything to do with stress and anxiety. There are several functions that happen that allow you to fight flee. That's a fight or flight response. So when I'm in a sympathetic nervous system, my cholesterol, my blood sugar levels, my blood pressure, my heart rate, you know, the blood flow to my muscles, everything is going to increase automatically. Automatically. That's what the sympathetic nervous system does. Digestion literally gets shut off. 
okay, the least focus is on the immune system because the body's prepared for fight or flight. Okay, now that fight or flight in the olden days would be probably chasing an animal or an animal chasing you. Today, it's a fight with your spouse, with your boss, reading the news, all of that stuff. Okay, so what happens is if I'm constantly scrolling through the news, okay, my cortisol levels have gone up because I'm stressed, puts me in the sympathetic nervous system. For however long I'm in the sympathetic nervous system, because guess what? I'm not just going to scroll through the news. I'm going to then discuss it with 10 people around me. I'm going to type a WhatsApp message and forward and say, hey, guess what? You know what's happening? And that little fear is going to build up more and more and more. So my cortisol is high. My inflammation is high. My cytokines are high. And my immunity is at its lowest point. The magic is the second nervous system is the parasympathetic nervous system. In this sympathetic nervous system, when the body gets the signal to move into parasympathetic, that is the phase where our body rests and digests. I'm able to sleep only if I'm, in the, if I'm in the parasympathetic nervous system. No one can ever sleep if they're in the sympathetic nervous system. Maybe because you're physically, physically fatigued, you may fall into a very deep, not very light sleep, and you'll constantly wake up and you'll still wake up in the morning feeling tired and sleep deprived. So in the parasympathetic nervous system is where we want to be when we're eating our meals. If I'm eating a meal when I'm in the sympathetic nervous system, most of us will not even break down and absorb the nutrients from the food that we eat. So when people stress eat, they get more acidic. They don't absorb nutrition. So you see, nutrition, immunity, everything gets better in this parasympathetic nervous system. The easiest way to move from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system is your breathing. When I can increase my oxygen levels by slowing down my inhale and slowing down my exhale, I may be very, very stressed, but I can trick my body into moving from sympathetic to parasympathetic. And that is why exercise is so important for you. Your pranayama is so important for you. Your asanas are so important for you. When you go on practicing this, it becomes a way of life. So today, I may be in a very stressful situation, but because of my pranayama practice, okay, because of my yoga, my exercise, I am able to maintain posture and I am able to maintain my inhale and my exhale. So the stress doesn't impact me. A lot of people say, Luke, everyone has stress. Yes, everyone does. But how do you take it? How much are you allowing your body to get hammered down by your stress? Your immune system get hammered down by your stress. So Tarika, we're going to ask you to do a quick video on the pranayamas and the asanas, maybe after this webinar, and then we're going to post it and send it to all the participants over here. So sure. thank you for this time. Tarika, before I, I let you go, what are your top three immune boosting foods that you, want, you would want to share with people out there? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, first is, I think right now at this point of time, considering the situation, um, I think it's very important to focus on what's easily available. So I think our uh, uh, good old spice box, I think has every single medicine that could boost your immunity, that could boost your heart health, uh, sorry, your lung health. Uh, for example, I think curcumin or turmeric is something that we put in every single Indian curry. So we can add that. And I think uh, the beauty of Indian food uh, lies in the synergy of, of different nutrients. So, you know, to, uh, to, to, to the curry, we add uh, like, the base that Hardik explained, onion, tomato, or garlic. To that, we add, um, you know, uh, curcumin or turmeric powder. Then we add a little bit of black pepper and some fat, which is a ghee or a coconut, co coconut oil or whatever. So I think this base in itself is such a powerful immunity booster. Second is, I think, um, uh, considering the uh, respiratory health uh, in mind, I think fenugreek seed is something that we can include. Uh, and I think the last would be uh, basil or holy basil. So to see which, which, which mostly grows in every backyard. I think uh, these are the three superfoods that I would uh, really suggest people to start including in any way possible in their diet. Thank you so much, Tarika. So to end this part, before we move on to Himali, uh, you need to understand a lot of people think they're having vitamins, supplements, and superfoods. But if you're stressed, you're not even absorbing them. So you see, immunity is not just food. It's your activity for blood circulation. It's the quality of your sleep and it's the health of your emotional state of mind. Moving over to Himali, Himali, I wanna start off. Remember, we had, we had a client who had an autoimmune condition, okay? Mm -hmm. And that client used to sleep at 3 a.m. every single day. And mm -hmm. only by changing the sleep pattern of that particular client, 
his entire autoimmune condition got reset. And today he lives without a single symptom. So Himali, over to you. Our ancestors had great immune systems. What's wrong with us? Because we have more superfoods, we have more vitamins, more minerals, fancier lifestyles. But what is your take when it comes to immunity and how can we use lifestyle? As a professor, what do you teach your students when it comes to building a strong immune system? Ayuk, uh, amazing question, actually. Uh, you I always believe in what we eat. Eat. Your body is going to assimilate, utilize those nutrients and build up on immunity. So when we talk about ancestors, our ancestors had the access to wholesome meats. Lied on whole grains, whole pulses, green leafy vegetables, whole fruits. But today, when we are looking at our fast-pacing world, we are looking at easy, easily available, ready-to-make or quick fixes. Like, you know, guests are coming at home, let's buy uh, stuff from outside or let's buy ready-to-eat from outside. So this ready-to-eat packages that we get or the processed food that we get is completely processed. All the nutrients, basically, uh, all the vitamins and minerals are present in the outer covering of the greens. But when we buy this processed food, those are processed. So the outer covering is removed and hence we do not have enough nutrients like vitamin B complex, that is B1, B2, B3, uh, some minerals like calcium, magnesium, copper, which are present on the outer lining, all those are gone in processing. Hence, whatever our body needs is not getting. Our body doesn't get that. And that is why it weakens our immune system. Our immune system needs these vitamins and minerals to keep up. But because of the lack or because of the fast-paced world, we are looking at the quick fixes and that is why our body is devoid of. Secondly, Luke, uh, I always tell my clients, we are what we eat. So if you are eating this processed food, your immune system is compromised. That is, uh, like Hadika said, we need a probiotic. There are always uh, gut bacteria in our body. So eat your gut bacteria with this processed food. What grows is more of bad bacteria than uh, good bacteria. As a result, you crave more for sugar. You have more cravings for fat, fatty foods, cheese, pizza, pasta, rather than normal wholesome meats. So that is why so, ancestors, yeah. So Hemali, it is safe to say, like, see, I'm not going to be extreme. Pizzas, burgers, all of these crap, you know, junk foods. Okay, I mean, I would eat it once in a way if I have a craving. But I think people need to understand that the more you eat these things, they're empty calories. They are right. depleting good nutrition. They are depleting vitamins and minerals from you, actually lowering your immune system. So a lot right. of people say, okay, I'm going to cut down on junk because I don't want to get fat. You want to right. cut down on junk because you don't want to get fat and you don't want to get sick. We need right. to understand that processed vitamins, uh, processed foods will deplete your immune system of its strength to fight. And that's why in the olden days, doctors first asked you, what do you eat? Because if your cells can't get the basics of nutrients, no amount of medication in the world is ever going to help you. So medicine and nutrition go hand in hand. Now, mm -hmm. I want to ask, you did mention about you know, vitamins and minerals. So should people start taking vitamin C supplements and should they start popping all of these multivitamins and stuff like that? What's your take on that? So uh, see, Luke, our body does not need anything in excess. If you are having whole grains, fruits, green leafy vegetables, anything that is locally available, which is not processed, we don't need any supplements, not even multivitamin. If you have sprouts, if you have whole grains, it is more than enough. If you have fruits, it is more than enough to give you the vitamin B complex that our body needs. So include nuts and seeds, it is more than enough to give you that omega-3, otherwise people pop in. Turmeric curcumin in your food, like you know, in cooking, like Hadika and Tarika said, it is more than enough to give you uh, enough I mean, anti-inflammatory. You don't need anything from outside. We don't need supplements per se if you're following a well-balanced food plan. Okay, so Himali, what about, you know, I'm a huge fan of vitamin D, vitamin right. B, the B vitamin, the entire spectrum because it has everything to do with your immune system and right. zinc. And these right. are three things, magnesium as well. These are three things people lack. So when people come to me, I want to first see their levels because, you know, we use immunity to, whether someone comes for weight loss, hair falls, skin issues, diabetes, mm -hmm. cancer, the first thing is your immune system. We want to know how your immune system is functioning. Okay. Zinc plays a huge role with immunity, vitamin D as well. But one in two people are either deficient in vitamin D 
insufficient in vitamin D or their levels are on the lower part of the scale. So what's your take on vitamins, deficiency, immunity, and how do you think people should, you know, address this to build their immune system? So, uh, Luke, I'll start with vitamin D. Vitamin D3 is my personal favorite vitamin. Anyone who is devoid of or deficient in vitamin D3, they will have simple complaints like fatigue, constant fatigue, headache, or listlessness. Their cholesterol levels may be high. Their uh, B12 levels may be, I mean, uh, their B12 levels may be low. So, uh, see, if you, uh, ideally, our ancestors never needed vitamin B12, uh, D3 supplements because B3 kind of, uh, you expose yourself to sunlight daily between 11 to 2 for 45 minutes and you get enough D3. Nowadays, our lifestyle is such that we are hooked at home in our AC, in our comfort zone. So definitely looking at our blood reports, we should definitely go ahead and have vitamin D3, of course, uh, after consulting our doctors. Coming to B12, uh, again, B complex is some vitamin like B1, B2, B3, B6, B7. All of these vitamins are needed so that your body can function. All the metabolism, like carbs, proteins, fats, whatever uh, metabolism, I mean, uh, needs these B vitamins to be broken down, to be assimilated by your body. So, lifestyle, like I said, we are devoid of our, not yet enough B vitamins because of the processed food. Whenever people come on program, depending on their blood reports, depending on B12 levels, we do give them initial hand-holding of B complex, of course, with uh, doctor in loop, and then we then wean, wean them off to whole natural fruits and vegetables so that they don't need B complex later on. Coming to zinc and vitamin A, these two are my personal favorite again because they are very, very important in healing our gut lining. Tarika said, Dr. Akshat said, all of us mentioned about stress. With stress, your immunity lowers. And as in, as in when your immunity lowers, it also impacts our gut lining. Uh, with bad bacteria, again, your gut lining is impacted. In fact, there are cases wherein, not cases, I mean, this is a practice that when a kid, infant falls ill, they have, they suffer from diarrhea, doctors give them zinc supplement to heal that diarrhea. Likewise, zinc not only boosts our immune system, but also our gut. And I can definitely get zinc through whole nuts, grains, and whole uh, green leafy vegetables. I don't need a supplement for zinc and magnesium. If I want magnesium, uh, whole nuts is more than enough for me. Our body does not need it in grams. Even micrograms and uh, mgs are more than enough. So, yes. Perfect. That's why it's called a trace mineral because we don't need too right. much of it. Right. So, Himali, thank you. You know, one of your points led me to ask Dr. Akshat another question. So, Dr. Akshat, I need you to make a very strong statement to people about the fact of self-medicating on antibiotics and why we should never take an antibiotic without a probiotic or a B-complex. How that is actually destroying our immune system further. So, people think they're getting better but they're actually destroying their own immune system and their gut health. So Dr. Akshat, over to you again, before we recap the session. Sure. So most importantly, if, if I had a choice, the whole concept of self-medication with antibiotics should not exist. Okay. It is a prescription drug, but unfortunately in India, it, the concept is that, you know, you can just go pick up any, any form of antibiotic on, on, from the chemist. So the first is that this, this shouldn't exist because when you take an antibiotic, it is doing a lot. So now the problem is because of the indiscriminate use of antibiotics, people are getting intolerant. I mean, that they, they, the antibiotics, you know, the, the first line of antibiotics don't even, they're not even working for people anymore. So then you have the second line, then you have the third line. So as you grow older, you've already exhausted all your options of antibiotics. So when you actually need it, when you're 60 years, 70 years old, you won't have antibiotics to use. Okay. Second is it destroys your, it, it, it really destroys, you know, the, the gut bacteria. So you have the microbiome, you have the good bacteria and the bad bacteria in your gut. The antibiotics actually destroy the, the good bacteria, which is why a lot of people have a lot of side effects from antibiotics. Even it could be acidity, it could be, uh, uh, you know, constipation. And what, what we do as doctors is we tend to prescribe an antacid along with the antibiotic, which is causing more acid-based regulation problems, which is causing further issues. So essentially what you have done is, yes, you've gotten symptomatic relief but till when and in the bargain you've destroyed your gut bacteria which is again further uh, uh, dipping your uh, lowering your immunity mm -hmm. so next time you're just going to be prone to more infections if i really could give out one one very important factor okay how do you decide whether you need an antibiotic or when do you really need to go for an antibiotic or meet a doctor is 
first if even if you get a little bit of flu cold cough don't rush okay do your home remedies give yourself a good 48 hours okay okay fine you're traveling there's work that's a different thing but give yourself a good 48 hours if you don't get better fine meet the doctor i would still say don't start an antibiotic start with a little bit of symptomatic release anti allergics you know maybe like a paracetamol or something that's fine only when you have high fever when you when you're hit with fever and that fever is not going down with paracetamol that's when you consider an antibiotic okay so this is this is something that you as a patient or an individual you should be able to wait not panic and in a scenario if you do start with an antibiotic make sure you have a good probiotic at least for that you know the 5 7 or 14 days that you have the antibiotic you can take the support of a tablet along with a big good b complex so that would be important perfect thank you so much dr akshat so uh I think we're going to recap the session right now. What we are going to send you all is a whole handbook on everything that we've spoken about the foods because there are a ton of foods that can boost your immune system. But we don't want to complicate things. Like I'll I'll tell you if I had to look at the top immune boosting free foods that my team has also shared. You know, we start off with garlic and onion. If you're Jain, you don't have a problem. You don't have to eat it. You don't have to break your religious sentiments to eat something. you're getting it in cruciferous vegetables as well anything that is cruciferous today has its place in cancer arthritis autoimmune conditions if you have thyroid endocrine problems you got to make sure that you don't do it raw and it's always cooked okay a lot of people out there drinking these green juices in the morning thinking it is healthy please understand it is one of the biggest problems you can ever have unless you stay on a farm you are growing your own you know vegetables and juicing it because number 1 if you're not you're drinking a glass of pesticides number 2 we're not supposed to have so much of raw especially vegetables that have oxalates if you want to do raw you can do cucumber you can do carrot and beetroot that too in limitation but if you're putting kale and spinach and you know high oxalate veggies in you you are bound to have problems at some point so please don't think because it's green and because it's raw it is adding health benefits a lot of these green juices are high on fiber this fiber irritates the gut lining leaving you with a big issue of intestinal penetration in your walls which upsets your microbiome and decreases your immunity okay like i said if it was as powerful as a medicine we would prescribe it but it does not add that kind of value we think it's healthy because it sounds healthy a good marketing company can make anything sound good for you let's understand that it can make a protein shake make you believe that if you take it you're going to have a lean muscular body it can make a woman believe that if you use this shampoo that is positioned at the side of some actress with airbrushed hair you're going to have hair like that the world doesn't work like that if it did people would save money buy those products and everyone would be healthy and beautiful but it doesn't have to be that way so please understand that everything immunity requires simplicity immunity requires simplicity it does not require complication so we start off with our emotional health you need to meditate you don't like meditating fine sit in silence follow a passion follow a habit most people today have enough but they're not happy if you're not happy you are constantly stressed anxious and stuff like that i'm not saying you have to be happy you should be okay with being sad you should be okay with all the emotions but at the end of the day you need to be in control of how life is dealing you your card how you react to it how you feel everyone has a problem everyone thinks their problems are the worst until they meet someone else who has a problem worse than them and that's how life is i we see patients every single day and at the end of some consults i'm like wow this is the worst case i've seen and then the next day i have a case which is way worse than that the amount of emotional abuse that the patient is going through or whatever it is so you can't measure these things what can you do about it when it comes to stress to recap everything yoga meditation all of these things are tools and mechanisms there are two words that you have to master acceptance and letting go if you can do this from your heart it's easy to say very difficult to do it is very difficult to accept very difficult to let because what comes in between does in between that your ego your present but meditation you know pranayama prayer it teaches us to release the ego so that we can accept we can let go and we can heal and we can move on it's not for anyone else so we talk about people who forgive i can't tell you how many cancer patients we have who have unforgiveness in them and it's such a common trait to see so am i saying unforgiveness causes cancer absolutely not but it is a huge contributing factor your cancer let's be clear about that okay so unless you decide to work with that no amount of chemotherapy food pranayama is going to help you 
everything is multifactorial in this world. So please understand the quickest way to depress your immune system is with chronic stress. Yes, everyone has it. My question is, what are you doing about it? And you have enough of tools to start doing something about it. Okay, let's move backwards into sleep. There's nothing more to say about sleep. It has been scientifically and medically proven on human beings in labs that sleep deprivation dampens your immune system to almost 60 to 70%. Okay, so you can do everything that you want in the world, but if you're not sleeping well, so work on your sleep habits. We're going to send you uh, simple tips, simple videos where you can, if you have a problem sleeping, of course, you need to know how to fix it. So we're going to help you with that. But please understand, you cannot compromise sleep. The world out there today, you're all sitting at home. You're finding out that a lot of your life out there was a lie, okay? When people make you work more, okay, the first thing that you do it, hard work is everything, but not at the cost of your health. Remember, ask yourself this one question, okay? Who am I spoiling my health for, okay? So companies make you believe that success is working 17 to 18 hours. You're making them money. Understand that at the cost of your health. These are real things that people need to start reflecting on. Your sleep is primary. Primary. Okay, watch Netflix, do what you want, but organize your day in such a way that you have good sleep, you wake up feeling rested in the morning, period. A few nights here and there is not going to dampen your immune system. Chronic sleep deprivation is going to mess you up, mess up your immune system. And because you don't have sleep, your small problems the next day are going to be big problems. So your stress also increases. It's a vicious cycle. Coming down, exercise. If you are sedentary, your immune system is weak, period. If you're sedentary. So start walking. People say, what's the best exercise for immunity? The best exercise is movement. Start moving, period. Okay, keep that movement for 15 to 20 to 30 minutes. That is good enough for your immune system. So whether you dance, you do jumping jacks, you do yoga, you run, you lift weights, whatever creates movement and a higher heart rate, which you can maintain for 15 to 30 minutes or above is exercise that is good for your immune system. You over-exercise and you under-eat, you over-exercise and you under-recover or under-sleep you will destroy your immune system, okay? You are not an athlete. Don't try to act like one. If you want to be like an athlete, behave like an athlete. They eat, they sleep, and they train. They don't wake up to watch Netflix in between. They don't go out and eat junk food. They are disciplined. So if you want to run marathons, you train like an athlete, okay? Half the marathon runners out there today are not healthy. They are unhealthy, okay? They are unhealthy because they don't do it the right way. They have compromised immune systems. They have kidney damage. So please understand what you see on social media is people's opinions and what they want to show you. It is not the truth. The truth is your immune system requires good sleep, good emotional balance, the right amount of exercise that suits you, okay? and nutrition. Coming down to nutrition again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Look at farmers, look at poor people. They have the strongest immune systems eating the simplest foods. Okay, eating the simplest foods because they may have very simple foods like dal and rice, lentils and beans. They don't have superfoods. They don't have access to zinc supplements and curcumins, but they are active. They sleep well because they don't have, a more, they don't have social lives. Okay, and at the end of the day, look at anyone out there on the road. We may feel sympathetic for them, which we should. They're the happiest, okay? Typical picture in New York City, London, Mumbai, wherever I am, rush hour in the morning. Okay, you'll have everyone sitting in their cars with long faces, and you will see poor people on cycles, running around, laughing. They don't, probably don't even have as much as what we do, but they're laughing, and it's the unhappy people sitting in fancy cars. And that unhappiness decreases your immune system. So let's understand before we complicate immunity any further. You've heard what all our experts had to say. Now, what is it that you will do about it? Okay, if you have rice and dal at home, that's a great food for you. If someone asks me, what are the top superfoods? Your Indian garam masala is a superfood. Your sambar is a superfood. Your rasam is a superfood. Your kichidi is a superfood. Any Indian curry made the traditional way, which means you use pure ghee or a wood pressed or cold pressed oil. You use jaggery instead of sugar. You use the right salt instead of too much of refined salt. And you use quality ingredients and spices. That is a superfood by itself. So we don't need to complicate things. We need to keep things simple. So the homework for y'all is simple. Go back and reflect. Exercise, food, sleep, and emotional health. Where do you lack? Where are your gaps that you need to start filling 
and start filling them slowly, one step at a time. You would have not just invested in a stronger immune system, you would have invested in something called preventive medicine, which means you don't fall sick. As far as it's in your control, you don't wait to fall sick. And even if you do, your immune system and intelligence kicks in and helps you heal faster. I'll leave you off with a simple example. We have two kinds of cancer patients. Cancer patients that only do chemo radiation and throw themselves back into their lifestyle without changing anything, okay? And you have relapses of cancer, you have neuropathy, you have suffering from side effects, and then you have group two that has made changes. They're taking the same chemotherapy, the same radiation, but they are changing the way they eat. They are adding activity to a sedentary lifestyle. They are changing the way they sleep. They are letting go of toxic relationships, toxic people. They are changing their emotional health. And they, and they are on the path of recovery. And that is how it works. That is immunity. You have an intelligence in you. You are not even tapping it. Tap that intelligence by giving your body a little bit of the right things at the right time and all the time. Remember, this intelligence that is keeping you and me alive right now, while I'm speaking to you, while you're listening to me, you are probably breathing in a couple of pathogens, germs. It's in the air everywhere. But what's preventing you from falling sick? Your immune system. If you're sitting out there without the virus right now, what is protecting you? Your immune system and the lockdown and safe distancing. Okay, your immune system is protecting you and it works for you every second of the day while you're awake and every second of the night while you're asleep. It deserves and it demands that much of respect from you. So the next time you think, hey, I'm going to abuse my immune system by binge drinking, by, yeah, I'm not here to say that you have to have an extreme life. Go out, go loose once in a way. Do it all. We're human beings. We'll still be fine. But when you find your bad habits, becoming consistent. Know that you are disrespecting your immunity and it is going to come back and attack you. It is going to come back and take your health and your life away. And then people sit and they cry and they wonder what went wrong. This is what went wrong. So keep your immune system strong it is extremely important. I'm going to thank Dr. Aksha, Tarika, Hardika and Hemali for their time. All of the viewers out there, thank you for your time. The message is simple. We've recorded this video. You guys are the only pilot people who have gotten to see it live. We're going to share this video along with the handbook, a lot of recipes and everything that you need to start boosting your immunity at home right now. You can do your part by going ahead and sharing the video and sharing the handbook. It's for everyone because everyone out there can do something small to boost their immunity. So thank you everyone for your time. Thank you team. Have a great evening, everyone.